Thank you. Well, joining us now is David Webb of Sirius XM Satellite Radio, also a Fox News contributor who joins us on set this morning. What do you make of this, uh, the latest coming out of Ferguson this morning, this gunfire at this protest? Not unsurprising. I was there during the, uh, the initial phase in August and then for the grand jury verdict, literally within 50 feet or so of the first gunshots that started that night after the grand jury verdict. This is a couple of things that are wrong here. One, what are you protesting? What do you hope to accomplish? What has actually been done in Ferguson? The answer, nothing. Nothing has been done in Ferguson to any great degree to help the neighborhoods that have been blighted now. Some of them on West Florissant, South Florissant, look like war zones, some of the areas that I was there for the riots. Nothing's been done about that. What are you actually hoping to accomplish? The community has concerns that hasn't been addressed by the, quote, new leadership. Not significant enough accomplishment there. Michael Brown's friend, here's a simple, straightforward advice. Don't shoot at cops. <laughs> don't right. shoot at anyone, How, well, Don't shoot at anyone, but <laughs> what do you think is going to happen when you open fire no. on policemen wearing clearly marked police vests in an unmarked car? They're going to shoot back. I cannot have sympathy for an idiot which is what this person is. Emotion does not justify David, stupidity. David, how much of this is, is about the economy? We've had uh, uh, Deneen Borelli on earlier this morning who was saying that a lot of this is about the, the, the weak economic situation that these people are in, yes. the severe unemployment levels of some of these communities in Ferguson. The, the economy in any community, but certainly in this community, the economy matters. If you don't have a good education, which is also a part of the problem, you don't have a skill, a trade, or the ability to learn or do something, whether it's a tradesman, whether it's whatever it is. So the economy plays into this because you're not going to work. You're not buying into life. You're not maybe owning a piece of property or at least rent in your apartment. So the economy in these communities, Baltimore included, Camden, New Jersey, Fifth Ward in Houston, Compton, you go into these areas, there's economic blight. And without a good economy, people aren't as vested in their community. In Ferguson on South Florissant, uh, where this happened, or West Florissant, mm -hmm. I met young black men and women. S these two guys, Yolo Boutique, were an amazing example. They were in their mid-20s. They built a business. They were right across from the McDonald's. Well, they didn't get burned out as much or broken into, but they couldn't actually open and run their business. Mm -hmm. So they don't have people working for them. Sam's Meat Market, mm. he had uh, 23 employees. Uh. New York Pizza, multiple employees. Uh, the different businesses that were there in South Florida, uh, Janice Andrews and her family at, uh, at her store, the, the Little Caesars. Mm -hmm. What's happening here? The economy gets destroyed. The local economy goes, hundreds lose jobs. And these are the people that have to live in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck or close to mm -hmm. it. How do they pay their gas bill? How do they pay? Pay any bill. Mm -hmm. David, that YOLO boutique you mentioned is in the background of the shots we're showing this morning. I think that's very yeah. interesting. But so you make great points, you know, so it is about education. It is about jobs to help this. But how, how do, it's easy to say, but how do you do that? How do you go into a lower income area and, and start from the bottom, really, and start educating these people so that they do want to go out and have jobs so that when something happens like this, shooting at a police officer, it's not all the uh, energy going towards protesting, but more it's the energy is going into bettering your life, bettering your community. Mm -hmm. Contrast to events. Keep it in the back of your mind while I talk about this. Charleston, South Carolina, the reaction after the racist Dylan Roof went and shot up a black church reaction to the community. There is a more solidified community. They have got a good economy, good education system. They've got a good community. Community policing is a part of this. You need that. You need to go in and clean out crime. If you go off West Florissant in Ferguson, there is an area that's basically a gang alley. These are homes that look fairly normal, mm -hmm. but that's where a lot of the gang and you know, criminal activity or, or those that commit that live. So you deal with that. You deal with education. You deal with you deal with what's basically economic redevelopment in the community. You can bring in, in this case, some form of taxpayer dollars, not taxpayer giveaways, but work with companies to bring them in. But a company won't come in if you don't have a place to operate. 
So and, and, and this is a setback, obviously. Right. A big setback. For but this is a self-inflicted wound. There are outsiders that, and, and this includes George Soros. The fact is, he did fund a number of organizations that operated in Ferguson as a result of that. And this Black Lives Matter farce, mm. all right, mostly led by charlatans filled with intellectual sheep and, frankly, useful idiots in some cases, take away from the people who really are concerned about fixing their community regardless of color. So let me just bring a little bit more color into the situation. Uh, the police chief there, John Belmar, uh, said that these officers had been tracking the man whom they believed to be armed during this protest, this, these peaceful protests that we were told that they were. He said the man approached the detectives who were sitting in a van and opened fire. The officers returned fire from inside the vehicle before pursuing the man on foot. Belmar said the man shot against again at the officers, all four of whom returned fire. The man who fired on officers had a semi automatic nine millimeter gun that was stolen the police chief says last year uh, from one of the areas in missouri and now will come the cries for more gun control laws exactly. which don't do a damn thing in plain english about this type of person Not for lawful Look, gun owners that's they right. learned a lesson in the first round in august a year ago the police were not as effective later on that week they began to go into the crowd they put officers in the crowd uh, they did that we had officers around us this time they've actually learned to go in and track people who are going to be potential troublemakers that makes the community just a little bit safer but think if any of those gunshots had gone from from this criminal which is what he is had gone into the crowd and shot maybe the pastor who's tweeting well they don't love us they like to kill us or something to that effect or you have anonymous who sends out a tweet a picture that someone because they're involved in this the anarchists mm -hmm. they're involved in this i know factually talk to them interview them they're not shy about it but puts out a, a, a little video that says here he is lying on the ground and no medical help in a snapshot mm -hmm. Fact is, it was right after he was shot. No one had arrived this, on the scene. We, we'll pay all this attention to Ferguson, but you look at Chicago over the weekend. There were 45 shootings mm -hmm. in Chicago. Two people fatally shot in another. This is just from Friday night until early Monday morning. I mean, shocking level of violence in that city. And, and, and where's the Black Lives Matter? Don't lives matter depending on? Do they matter only based on being shot by a police officer or a white person? Or contrast that with Alabama, where you have a cop who's beaten by a 34-year-old black man, mm -hmm. a career criminal, basically. He's pistol-whipped until he's unconscious, and they go out and they start mocking him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you start contrasting these situations in the coverage. Yep. Black Lives Matter will take over everything for the day, driven by yep. this narrative. But where is the honest? Where's Al Sharpton, who went to Ferguson, gave a press conference at 11 a.m. in the morning yep. one day, flew back and went to Del Frisco's for a steak and martinis that night? All right. Emotions running high this morning for sure. But this facts need to take over facts in this. Facts need to be present always. All right, David Webb, thank you. Good to see you. All right.